Hello everyone! I'm Heather. I'm back for a really quick video. This one will be legitimately quick and not just a pack of lies uh, because it is Saturday and I have things to do. Place to go, people to see. Uh, I gotta do some errands. I gotta pick up the kid's nativity costume at the post office. I gotta pretend like I'm cleaning some stuff. I gotta meet my favorite drunks later for some Christmas market drinking. Like, it's all kicking up. I gotta be quick, quick, quick. So this video will be a tag. And I was tagged in this tag by Sean the Book Maniac, who is like, as far as I'm concerned, the king of tags. Because every tag coming off his channel is like the greatest tag. And I always write it down somewhere like, Heather, remember that this is an awesome tag. And if you ever need to do a tag, please do this one. I will link the uh, one he tagged me in for this tag down the bottom so you can see it. Um, and also you should definitely scour his channel for some awesome tags, just in case you haven't already done that. Uh, so this tag is the choose the year book tag. So he put down in his, um, what he calls his show notes, his like uh, bit below the video about how you get this information for a year on Goodreads. Um, but I think that the year that I've chosen goes beyond the Goodreads um, allowance. I think it just goes back 100 years. So it's like 2019 to 1919. And that's really it. And I've gone obviously beyond that. Uh, so I'm going to use Wikipedia, but I think it works the same. It's okay. Um, so I'll link the page that I found the literature for my year on Wikipedia down below as well. So anyway, the first question is the year that you chose and why? So the year that I chose is 1886. And it's a bit of like a roundabout explanation for why I've chosen it. It's a bit stupid. But um, basically, I have a weird... <laughs> My dog is going all kinds of crazy in the background. I apologize for this. It's because my husband has not walked her yet. And she's like, what is going on? It's like daylight. I'm awake. I've had some food. I've had a poo. Like, are we going for a walk yet? Because maybe you've forgotten. Let me remind you about eat times. Anyway, sorry. I am basically obsessed with, like, the former lives of my house. Okay, so the house that I'm living in is a terrace house. So, like, um... If you don't live in the UK, like basically the whole of the UK is just full up of all of these Victorian terrace housing. So it's like a sort of like a townhome where it's in a line of houses and they're separate houses, but they're sort of connected by a single wall on either side. So this guy over here is a guy and that guy over there is a guy. Um, anyway, so um, and all of these terraces went up sort of in a rush in the 19th century. Like it just went from like no houses in the whole of the UK to just approximately eight gazillion houses in the whole of the UK, like all looking like this terrace thing. So anyway, I live in a Victorian terrace. And um, because I'm American, when I originally moved to the UK, that was amazing because all the houses that I've ever lived in before were built, you know, in the last 10 or 20 years like the house I lived in when I was a kid it was 20 years old and people were like "Ooh, it's getting on it's gonna have some problems you know like are you sure you want to buy such an old house <laughs> but like in the UK people are living in like 300 year old houses like it's basically made of spiders but it's fine you know when I first moved into this house I was like oh my god it's so cute like every little thing like envisioning all of like the little things that probably went on in my house in the last 100 150 ish years or so um and then as time has gone on I've like realized that that was just naivete and stupid there's like whole dynastic spider families playing out like godfather situations in my bathtub like um, like nooks and crannies like weird nooks like this I think originally was just the side the place next to the fireplace There's no fireplace next. There's no fireplace there now, you know So it's just like an odd nothingness space that I've had to fill with my books anyway, so I Still despite being like having fallen out of love with the idea of living in a Victorian house Where it's always freezing cold and the spaces are really awkward and there's so many spiders um, I still spend a ridiculous amount of my time thinking what has happened in my house before me? The people who lived here, what did they do? Did they do the same stuff as me in the same places as me? Um, and a lot of that does center around books because I spend, you know, the vast majority of my time just sitting around reading like a lazy, ridiculous person. I'll just sort of like be reading and be like, was someone in the 19th century sitting in this exact spot reading this exact book? Potentially, 
you don't know. You know, Reason I chose 1886, my house was not built in 1886. I do not know when my house was built and nobody really knows. Like several different sources state when it was likely to have been built. Like my husband thinks that he found a thing that it was built in 1882. Then I found something else that was like 1884. Um, and then there was another thing that said just early to mid 80s. So I was like, okay, I would definitely want to pick a year where the house was definitely here. And sort of 1886, it's the first year I can like with certainty say my house was standing in this place in 1886. So that's the year that I've chosen. So the people that were living in my house in 1886, what is it that they were seeing when they're walking by bookshops and stuff? You know, like I understand that maybe they didn't have those new books in their house exactly because, you know, books were rarer, they were more expensive, people were poorer, blah, blah, blah. Like books weren't really as much of a, as a throwaway thing as they are now. But, you know, they would have, if they liked books and they were interested in books, they would have been sort of aware of the ones coming out. I think quite a lot of the ones that came out in the 19th century were first serialized in um, newspapers and magazines and stuff. And they would have had that. They would have been sort of reading pieces of books at a time in magazines and newspapers and stuff. And then obviously walking sort of to and from work and around town and blah, blah, blah. They'd have seen bookshops and in bookshop windows, there'd be like the newest ones and there'd be hype about them. People would be talking. So I thought, oh, what would have been going on with the first occupants of my house so that I can just add an obsessive level to my constant thinking about them? So for 1886, the next question is, which books published in that year have you read or if none, heard of? So I have read a couple from this year, um, but most of them are just ones that I've heard of and I've thought, oh, um, I want to read that or I've heard of the author and maybe not quite the book thinking, oh, I didn't know that they wrote that book, you know. But um, ones that I've read are Robert Louis Stevenson's Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped. He was very active that year. Um, and Alice in Wonderland, um, which by a technicality actually came out the year before that. But it came out in like a really weird run of like very few books that all got messed up or something like that. Anyway, like the main publishing of it in the end was in 1886. So I don't have any of the Robert Louis Stevenson ones that they're on about because I read them and then I give them away because I'm a bit Marie Kondo obsessed. But I do obviously have Lewis Carroll's Alice's Alice Adventure in Wonderland because who doesn't in this day and age? I absolutely love this one. I love the illustrations. I love like this edition of it as well because it's so small and cute. And like I've only ever read it once, but I keep it around I don't even know why. I think it just, I just want to have it with me because I love it so much. Um, and eventually, yeah, I'll give it to my kid. And I think that she will also love it. You know, if she doesn't love it, you know, well, she can leave. Just kidding. You know, and also just thinking. So it came out 1886, you know, was somebody sitting in this very corner with this very bookshelf reading this very book what a Christmassy thought like a ghost of Christmas past Ooh, would somebody have had a tree like right here when did Christmas trees become a thing I know that was like originally a German thing was it Victoria who brought it over like Albert <clears throat> I'm gonna google that or if anybody knows please let me know there's got to be somebody out there in booktube land who knows the history of like Christmas trees in Britain and then I don't have any of the probably Stevenson ones that were done that year I don't have a kidnapped one or Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde one even though I've read them but I have read Treasure Island and I do have it here and I really loved this one as well. Robert Louis Stevenson is one of my fave guys, you know. I definitely should have done Victober, guys, just like as a thought. I didn't do it because I did like Hocus Pocus stuff and like other things. But this year, or for 2020, I need to like reflect on my life choices and then just do Victober because I love it. Uh, because I've only read three of the ones in that year, I've done also the ones that I've heard of, and it's an absolute list of them. So, you know, H. Rider Haggard, She, that's something that I've always wanted to read. Louisa May Alcott, Joe's Boys. So I read, obviously, Little Women, and the movie is coming out, I think, this year for Christmas time, which I'm super excited about. Um, Frances Hodgson Burnett, Little Lord Fauntleroy. So I've not read that book. I mean, I've heard of it, but I have read other ones of hers, like Secret Garden. I read ages ago and I absolutely loved when I was a kid. Um, and also Little Princess, which I read this year for Believe-a-thon last month. And it was so, so good. I love her so much. So I definitely should read this other one that she's read. Like I looked online and she just read an absolute load of them. I didn't even know. I need to start sort of working on like working through her whole repertoire, basically. <clears throat> um, 
Another one is called The Evil Genius by Wilkie Collins. I love Wilkie Collins so, so, so much. Um, for the book club in my office, like my works book club, we're currently reading The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. And I have read this before. So I haven't even started it yet, even though we have to talk about it at the meeting at the end of this month. Um, but I've read it previously and it's so, so good. And I've read loads of Wilkie Collins ones. I've read The Woman in White, which was so good. I read No Name, which was so good. Um, I read another one that was to do with like a villain. I'm trying to think of like the name of him. I can't think of it. I'll put it down below. And I love, love, loved that one as well. And there's loads of these. So I have heard of one that he did, which was The Evil Genius, but I never read it before. Um, but apparently that was published in 1886. So when was this one published? Probably so 1871. Okay. Basically, it had been out for 15 years by the time, you know, this year that we're envisioning of people living in my house. So they probably, you know, could very well have had this very book in this house. Is this like maybe the 65th return of this book to the house? Who knows? I'm probably gonna be thinking about this later on the toilet when I'm reading it. I'm just gonna be like, okay, anyway, I'm just being like super dramatic. This is not my norm. Okay, I apologize. Um, Thomas Hardy's Mayor of Casterbridge. I don't really know anything about that one. It's not really on my radar for ones that I would read, but I've, never, but I've definitely heard of it. Um, Henry James, The Bostonians. Uh, Leo, Tolsto Leo Tolstoy, The Death of Even Illich. So um, I think my dad has read this one and said it was really good, but I feel like it will always in my mind be relegated to the place where dad's books live, you know, like ones that dad has read that I will never read because dad read them. <laughs> have that like it's probably a really good book but my dad was like oh I read this book and it was really good and now I'm like did you <laughs> okay and also Zola the masterpiece which I think actually is called Luf or something like the egg and then like the English version is the masterpiece is that true because let me tell me um right okay so that was the second question third question is are there any books published in that year that sound interesting and would you read them now Yes, as you ask. Um, so Wilkie Collins didn't just publish Evil Genius. He also published something called The Guilty River, which I've never heard of. But when I looked at it, it looked amazing. Okay. I acknowledge at the outset that misfortune has had an effect on me, which frail humanity is for the most part anxious to conceal. Under the influence of suffering, I've become of enormous importance to myself. In this frame of mind, I naturally enjoy painting my own portrait in words. Let me add that they must be written words because it is a painful effort to me, law, since I lost my hearing, to speak to anyone continuously for any length of time. Uh, this person says, uh, it was written two years before, I'm on Goodreads by the way, <laughs> looking at this book, uh, was written two years before its author's death. By that time he was suffering from angina, neural neuralgia, rhythmic uh, rheumatic gout, bronchitis, and opium addiction. The supreme deafness that characterized so much of Collins' earlier work is largely missing here. Oh. I still want to read it. <laughs> um, also something I want to read is, um, Jerome K. Jerome, The Idle Thoughts of an Idle Fellow. How amazing does that sound? Okay, this person on Goodreads says, this is one of the wittiest, most hilarious books I've read in quite a while. I was quite uncertain about picking up this book because the only humor or sarcasm that I really enjoy is written by Oscar Wilde. It's not every day that one comes across satire of such quality or honesty. The essays cover a wide range of topics from pets to babies to blues and clothing. I deliberately restricted myself to reading it, just an essay a day. And, um, and most of the time I couldn't read this book in public because every other sentence is ridiculously funny and I'd break into peals of laughter at regular intervals, drawing weird looks from the strangers around me. Same friend, same. There's something here by an author I've never heard of called um, Emily Ruite, called Memoirs of an Arabian Princess. Um, Goodread says, this work has been selected by scholars as being culturally important and as part of the knowledge base of civilization as we know it. <laughs> Heavy. Uh, this work is in the public domain in the United States of America. Boom, I'll get it on LibriVox. Okay, so this person named Linda on Goodreads is like, while planning our trip to Zanzibar, as you do, 
Um, I booked a tour of the Sultan's Palace and learned there's a room dedicated to this princess. I'd never heard of her before. The guidebook said only that she fell in love with a German, ran away with him, and converted to Christianity. I was interested to learn more and discovered she had written this book that is believed to be the first book written about an Arabian woman, and not just any Arabian woman either. <gasps> I'm so down, guys. Do you think anyone would have like heard of this living in my house? Sort of like reading the newspaper or like the culture and art section or like a magazine or a serial or something like that and hearing this big thing about this Arabian princess releasing a memoir. I bet people would have eaten that up. Victorians love that kind of shit. Guys, like if I get it and then I bring it in this house, is it going to be like everyone who's ever sat in this house had at some point wanted to read this book but never got around to it and now I'm the first person that's actually going to bring it into the house and read it? Guys. I'm getting shivers. Okay. Next question. We're almost done. Like, what is my timing on this? Okay, not bad. Not bad. Um, what is the most obscure sounding book, potentially, from these ones that came out this year? Um, there's one called Needlework as Art by Marion Alford, which I think actually sounds lovely. Like, I like a bit of embroidery me. You know, like um, I've, I've embroidered some things for my kid in the past, you know, just because I can do. Also one called Esoteric Christianity and Mental Therapeutics by Warren Felt Evans. <laughs> so Wikipedia says Warren Felt Evans was an American author of the New Thought Movement. He became a student of the movement in 1863 after seeking healing from its founder, Phineas P. Quimby. He was the founder of a mind cure sanatorium, or a mind cure sanitarium in Salisbury, Massachusetts, and has been referred to as the recording angel of metaphysics. How weird. So the very last question is strangest book cover? Question mark. There aren't a lot of weird covers so much in the 19th century like you know you know they tend to be sort of really bare even, especially nowadays they've like lost all of their like jackets and stuff or they never had it they were just sort of cloth bound normal books with patterns on the front um and words and not really any pictures um but i found a couple good uh, like reprints of them you know like 1930s and 40s reprints of these books and some of the covers are super good and i think the very best one like i'll put it like up here, up here, up here. <laughs> I'll put it somewhere. It's Kidnapped. Oh my god, this cover of Kidnapped is amazing. Like, what is going on? Like, the pirate looks like so camp. <laughs> like, he looks like he's like in the village people or something. Like, you know, I'm not like against that look. I feel like it's a very strong look that I'm for. But as a pirate, you know, like, it's probably unlikely. Like, what is up with this kid? Like, he looks frightened, but also like he needs to sneeze, you know? Like, no. <laughs> No! Um, and like the face, like the face on the pirate as well is like a bit like, ooh, I'm gonna get you, but also a bit like, you wanna roll around later? <laughs> I feel like I need to get it. I don't know, like, do you think I can find it online? Where do you go to find specific editions of things? That was the end of the tag. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I rambled for ages. Anyway, this was a super fun tag. I'm not gonna tag anyone because I feel like, I don't know. If you really, really like it, you should just do it. Obviously, loads of people do. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this tag. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sean the Book Maniac, for giving me this tag and tagging me in it. Um, and I feel like I'm like in like a deeper, you know, spiritual alignment with my house now. And okay, I have to go. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video. Um, if you liked it, please give it a like. Also, if you have any comments at all about it, like you, like some of these books or you don't like some of these books or you know if other books are um, published in the same year that I missed or if you really like you know Victorian ones or books from this decade or you also have like a really ridiculously old house that is super annoying because it's freezing cold and there's loads of bugs in it um any comments at all please let me know um okay goodbye <laughs> goodbye goodbye goodbye